welcome to adureka this is anuj today what we are going to do we will start with hyperledger we will see that how do you compare the traditional blockchain and a business network what is hyperledger project what is the architecture how do you achieve consensus in a hyperledger network what are the different api and application models that are available what are the different kinds of network topology that you can have in hyperledger what are the different project so hyperledger is a basically name of a common group and it has got multiple projects or multiple blockchain stacks fabric indi iroha sortu and what is the business network deployment on hyperledger computer playground these are the topics that we will be covering in this module so let's first try to understand you know what is hyperledger and how does it differentiate from bitcoin and ethereum that we have already covered and what are the core features and why do we need hyperledger basically you know as i mentioned earlier as well the blockchain primarily is a technology where multiple participants interact with each other and come to a common agreement to achieve the consensus and update the distributed ledger this concept initially was limited to the public domain where you know you create a system where anyone can come subscribe the service become the member and have the copy of the database with himself or herself and then start transacting onto the system and majorly it was for the financial industry or cryptocurrencies now when it was seen that you know it can be extended beyond financial services cryptocurrencies and you know maybe it can be incorporated within an organization or within a certain set of people rather than giving the public access to everyone because you know especially in the business scenarios you cannot give the access of your data to all the participants so that's when these permissioned or private blockchains came into the existence already i gave you one example of coda another one is quorum you know which is quite similar to ethereum but you know the leader in this domain of permissioned and private blockchain is hyperledger now what is hyperledger hyperledger is basically a group of products which are designed by a open source company called as linux foundation Linux Foundation is a open source company that gave birth to all these standards of a permissioned blockchain. So Hyperledger has got many products like you know there is a Hyperledger Fabric, Hyperledger Sawtooth, Hyperledger Indi, Hyperledger Burrow, Hyperledger many products are there, Caliper etc etc. So but all these products have their own different features based on you know which you will use them. but the most famous among these are hyperledger fabric and hyperledger sawtooth these two are also developed by multiple organizations so linux foundation is basically a group of more than 100 companies i think 125 members are there and all top companies in the world like ibm intel accenture dell microsoft they are all part of it and they are jointly developing these standards and because so many corporates and so many big names are associated with these so therefore we see very frequent revision of these standards so the one which is documented in edureka is i think version 0.6 and it was not long back this version was the prime version but you know now it has gone from 0.6 version 2.0 which was released i think a few weeks back only the growth and development of hyperledger based standards is enormous because there are a lot of industry experts which are working in this area and uh, the due attention on these blockchain technology is huge because they are the ones which are primarily used in industry so if you will think about creating any kind of a blockchain which is generalized can be used by anyone in the public you will probably use ethereum to create it because it's simple it is easy to create and it is very simple to scale and deploy hyperledger you know if you create a public network it will add lot of complexity which is not required in a public network and it will not be easy to deploy hyperledger is much more complex than any other blockchain stack that is available both in terms of creating the smart contract creating a network deploying the network making it live for the customers doing the testing it's much much more complex than any other blockchain stack that is available so generally people reach out to hyperledger only after doing ethereum coda quorum you know all these fundamental stacks so once they are well versed with it then only they touch upon hyperledger 
because it is considered much more complex than any other this thing so hyperledger is basically used for business private and permission network as we have already discussed one of the key feature in any kind of a business network is that you know only the valid users can enter that business network so you need to have components that enable user ids and their authentication all the users which are becoming the part of this network needs to be authenticated and entity in hyperledger with authenticates these members is called as membership service provider and not only the users even the peers that are going to get added will also need to be authenticated each and every entity whether it's a peer whether it's a user whether it's an application everyone will need a authentic entry before they can get themselves registered into the system so each one will need a certification and msp uses the certification authority which is also built in in hyperledger fabric to get these certificates and give these certificates to various entries so there are two things one is your msp membership service provider which basically keeps track of who needs to access what what privileges can be given to and who all can access the network and then there is a certification authority which basically issues the certificate on the request of msp so that those certificates can be given to the respective nodes peer or individuals who are becoming the part of the network one of the key differentiator is from ethereum and bitcoin is there is no cryptocurrency in hyperledger so there is no concept of cryptocurrency there is no transaction no gas no ether nothing of that sort in hyperledger even if you want to create it is not easy to incorporate the cryptocurrency so generally if you want to incorporate a system where you know you have a cryptocurrency or you need a tokenization you generally wrap it up using the ethereum plugins that are available in hyperledger so for implementing the tokens in a business network you generally depend upon ethereum or quorum for that and then you integrate it along with hyperledger fabric those kind of integration tools and mechanisms are available by which you can integrate hyperledger with ethereum for specifically for using tokens or cryptocurrencies one unique aspect of hyperledger is that you know each and every entity is modular so it's kind of a plug and play so for example there is a default certification authority that comes with hyperledger fabric if you want to use your own certification authority it's just a plug and play kind of a system in a configuration file you can mention that you know i want to use this certification authority rather than using the default one similarly by default if you are given a byzantine fault tolerance consensus algorithm but you want to use some other consensus algorithm of your choice you can just take the original one out and put your own consensus algorithm so if you see that way everything is plug and play so therefore everything is modular in nature you can just take out any default component and put in any component of your choice depending on what business problem you are trying to solve the next thing which is different is consensus consensus as i mentioned the way it works in hyperledger is completely different than you know the way it works in ethereum and bitcoin you know there is no concept of proof of work there is no concept of proof of stake generally the consensus is driven by the individual nodes who are responsible to authorize that transaction and those individual nodes are known as endorsers and the distribution of the blocks are given to the special nodes which are called as orderers so the way consensus is achieved in a fabric network is completely different the way it is achieved in ethereum or bitcoin and the key reason you know we have a much simpler consensus here is because it is a private network where all entities are known so i already know that you know whom can i trust to basically authorize this transaction for example in a land registry environment i know that you know this node is a registrar node and he is the authorized person for signing off a registry or to authorize a land deal similarly in a medical domain this particular node is an authorized doctor he can put my or he can update my medical records with a new recommendation or with a new medical test so similarly all authorized users which are authorized to initiate the transaction or which are authorized to validate the transactions are given this responsibility of endorsing the transaction and those are called as endorser nodes so we have endorsers we have orderers and then we have committers so there are three different kinds of nodes which are available then there is a concept of channel which is not there in any other kind of a blockchain 
within a single blockchain network okay you can run multiple networks together so for example there are say five six different departments in an organization one is your finance department another is your hr department the third is your operations department and although you know there are some entities which can exchange information among themselves but not all entities should be seeing that information for example if hr can only disclose the salary information to the manager of the operations team and not to the entire operations team so there can be selective sharing of the information and then there can be nodes which are part of multiple channels see for example the hr is designated as one channel the operations is designated as one channel there can be nodes which are part of both the channels which can have the information both from the operation side and as well as from the hr side and then the operations team will not know that you know this data is also existing with this particular node the linux foundation is the body which is running this hyperledger set of standards so if you see this is the main website of hyperledger it says advancing business blockchain adoption through global open source collaboration and you know this is getting changed day by day even if you see this site you know you will find daily new things coming up these are the project these are also increasing day by day the one that we will be concentrating is hyperledger fabric this is the most widely used hyperledger instance that is used for a permissioned or a private network the next one which is famous is sawtooth the rest all are rarely used you can see that you know this is the hyperledger website these are the various products then extensive documentation is available for all the products so if you select for example hyperledger fabric you can go to various videos you can go to various kind of tutorials data sheets some of the open source projects which are going on where you can directly participate you can download the code you can see you, know, you can build everything from scratch so this is a very informative website that they have created and if you go to build your first network it will direct you to the documentation of hyperledger fabric so the documentation is also very detailed it tells you each and everything about how the architecture looks like what are the different entities in a hyperledger network how do they interact with each other so it's a very very detailed architecture let me try to explain you using the diagram let's say this is my blockchain network now i can have different things apart from the blockchain network i can have client application and i can have different users as well like for example user one user two etc let's say this is the typical scenario where you know i have multiple users i have a client application that are accessed by multiple users based on their credential and then this is my blockchain network where all the nodes are connected with each other in distributed manner the fundamental of blockchain will still remain in intact these nodes will be connected with each other so now what will happen is there are some additional entities here like you know one is your msp msp or membership service provider huh? so what it will do is it will keep track of you know what access is required for whom for example it will basically provide the authentication that you know first of all what all members are part of my network is this node part of my network is this node part of my network in case all these nodes are part of the network they will need to get the credentials from membership service provider all of them will need to register to the membership service provider and membership service provider will give them the credentials which they will need to register before they become the part of the network and not only the nodes even the client application will also need to do the same and even the users will also need to do the same so msp is one body which is giving you the credentials to basically join the network and what level of rights do you have can user one initiate a certain type of transaction say for example if in a medical domain you are a nurse can you actually authenticate a medical record you cannot so what kind of credentials each user has will be stored in a membership service provider this membership service provider takes the help of certification authority or ca basically provide the certifications to different members so for example if it finds a client application has certain attributes accordingly it will ask for the certificate from ca and it will give it back to the client application 
so that the client application can authenticate itself and do the transaction that it is authorized to do. Now, considering that this is well understood, let's remove these lines from here. Now, in a typical scenario, what will happen is that you know your client application will basically interact with the blockchain network. And in a generalized scenario, what will happen is that it will send the request or it will send the transaction to a particular node and then it will get distributed to all the nodes. That's how it basically happens in Bitcoin and Ethereum. In Hyperledger Fabric, it does not happen like this. So what happens is in case a client application has a request for a particular transaction, it only sends it across to a certain nodes and those nodes are called as endorser nodes. Endorser nodes are those nodes which basically endorse any transaction. Endorse transactions means they validate whether the transaction is correct or not. So what will happen is, let's say in my network, these two are my endorser nodes. You can have any number of endorser nodes in your network. It depends on what kind of endorsement policy you have. For example, if somebody is writing a medical record in your blockchain network, you can have two or three doctors validating it. Or maybe along with a doctor, you want to get it validated with your medical insurance company as well. Whether you know the correct medical record is getting updated or not. So depending on how many endorsers, what all endorsers you want, you can have as many endorsers in the network. So let's say in this particular illustration, this is an endorser and this is also the endorser. Now, based on how many endorsers you have, you can have different kind of endorsement policies. Now, what is endorsement policy? Endorsement policy is that you know how endorsers will endorse the transactions. For example, if there are two endorsers, I can have a endorsement policy that even one of them is able to verify that the transaction is correct. I will mark that transaction as complete. I can have an endorsement policy that you know both of them needs to sign this transaction as valid transaction. Then only I will accept this transaction as complete. So depending on what kind of endorsement policy you write based on which your transaction will be accepted or rejected. So what happens is that you know client application will send the request to these endorsers endorser one and endorser two it will send the request that okay i want to perform a certain transaction say the name of the transaction is t1 say this transaction is basically updating the land record there is a sale request of a particular land record and client application is sending that request to the endorser now what endorser will do endorser will check the database so endorser will have the blockchain database and how it will check the database it will run the smart contract now the smart contract in hyperledger is called as chain code so you will not hear the term smart contract in hyperledger fabric the term which is used for a smart contract is chain code so what endorser will do is it will run the smart contract on this transaction it will see whether this transaction is a valid transaction or not for example if there is a land sale request it will check from the existing database whether this land is qualified for the sale or not whether the price which has been mentioned in the transaction is the valid price for that particular land or location whether this is eligible to be sold out or not whether it is industrial land or a domestic use land so all these kind of things can be checked by the endorser node and they will reply with the read write set so they will reply that okay whether this is a valid transaction or not so they will get the transaction request and both of them will reply that with the validity of that transaction so they will reply with the read write data they will tell that okay this looks like a valid transaction and you can update it into the ledger but it has still not been updated into the ledger not even in the ledger of endorsers endorsers are just letting the client application know that you know this is my endorsement result so we have learned three different terms like msp certification authority and then endorsers now the client application get these endorsed transaction along with the sign of endorser a digital signature that you know this particular endorser has signed this transaction now there is another set of special nodes in hyperledger which are called as orderers and orderers are represented like this 
so basically ordering is represented as a service but they are nothing but they are special nodes so this is how you represent orderer so now what client application will do is it will send these validated transactions to the orderer these are all validated transactions so just remember one thing that in hyperledger network the smart contract is only running on endorsers a smart contract is not running on orders it is not running on these remaining nodes these remaining nodes are called as committer nodes so a smart contract is only running on endorser nodes and the rest of the nodes only have the blockchain database they are not running the smart contract so the endorser nodes once verify that the transaction is correct it will give it to the ordering service ordering service what it will do is ordering service will create the block it will create the block from the transactions and it will distribute the block to the network so it will basically send it across to various nodes that are connected including the endorsers it will send this transaction to all the connected nodes so there is a dedicated ordering service which will keep waiting for the transactions from the client applications and they will create the block from the transactions and they will distribute the block there can be different kind of ordering service for example there are three prominent ordering service that we use so they are solo raft and kafka these are the three prominent ordering service that you generally use solo is where you just have one node which is creating the blocks and distributing it across raft and kafka are fault tolerant services where you know you have multiple nodes uh, creating the blocks running some kind of a byzantine problem algorithm on those transactions before getting them distributed to the entire network now when these blocks are received so these blocks will be received by endorser also these blocks will be received by these nodes now these nodes are known as committer blocks what they will do is they will get the block from ordering service they will verify whether the transactions that are part of that block are endorsed by the endorser or not whether they have correctly been distributed by the ordering service or not and once they verify this information they will update their blockchain database and you know the transaction will be committed to the blockchain so this is the overall flow of your transaction in a hyperledger fabric network you have endorser you have orderer you have committer you have client application you have membership service provider you have certification authority you know all these things are integral part of any hyperledger fabric architecture that you will hear of and what you are achieving is you are achieving a throughput of 1000 tps in ethereum also you are able to achieve maximum throughput of 300 tps 300 transactions per second in hyperledger fabric you can achieve more than 1000 transactions per second worth of speed there is no overhead anywhere you don't need to deploy smart contracts at all the nodes the minimum database is kept in the blockchain database so again there are three categories of database here one is your blockchain database second is your world state information world state database world state database can be your couch db or level db and third is your file system based database which are your external storage that can have your ipfs or storage so these are the different kinds of database that you can have in hyperledger fabric your blockchain database is the set of transactions or the blocks the world state database is the recent state of all those transactions so world state is also updated when you update the blockchain database transaction and then you can have the individual files stored in different kind of distributed file system like ipfs or storage and uh, they can be connected with the blockchain database because we can store the signature of these files in our blockchain network so this is how your fabric networks look like so a smart contract is known as chain code then uh, each and every protocol so the messaging protocol also is plug and play like you know you have whisper and uh, others so that is also plug and play your this algorithm of creating the hash is also plug and play so you can have any kind of an algorithm that you want now let's try to understand the concept of channel now there can be some nodes which are part of basically two different networks so for example if this node is also linked to so let's say this is my red channel this entire network is my red channel it has its own database say for example db1 a blockchain database each and every node will have that particular database 
each will be having this db1 now there can be other networks which might need these nodes maybe this is a committer node here this might be endorser node in some other network so you can take an example of a if you have two different blockchain networks or two different hospital chains which are not interacting with each other and there are doctors which are associated with both the networks they will have the common points in both the networks right so they will be part of multiple channels so what is happening in the latest versions of hyperledger fabric is there are a lot of new concepts that have also come along with you know whatever we have covered for example there is a concept where you know this ordering service can only distribute the transaction to certain nodes and then those nodes will distribute it further to the entire network because in case you have a large network say hundreds of nodes are connected cannot give the entire load to the ordering service or you will need to build a very heavy ordering service to basically distribute the block there are newer and newer concepts coming in the latest releases of hyperledger fabric now one more thing that you need to basically keep in mind is that you know whenever you are designing a business network you need to keep in mind three things first is your asset asset is basically what you are looking to transact your medical record can be asset your land record can be an asset your gold can be an asset your money can be an asset your intellectual property can be an asset so hyperledger fabric lets you define the asset in ethereum you cannot define the asset everything is measured in terms of ether so how many ethers you are transferring in the transaction is basically your asset but in hyperledger fabric you can define the asset in a structure that okay this is my asset my land record which means my house number my registry number all those things can come as a asset whenever you are designing a blockchain network especially hyperledger fabric you need to first think of that you know what assets are part of this network second thing is participants so when you know that okay these are the assets then you know what all participants will be there in my network so for example in a medical domain application your patient is a participant doctor is a participant your insurer is a participant your drug supply person is a participant your research organization which are doing medical research is also a participant all these are participants and you will need to define all these participants when you are defining the network so in the node js there are named structures which are given to define the assets and to define the participants similarly you will also need to define the transactions transactions is basically what all transactions can take place between these participants catering to these assets so for example there can be transaction where a land is getting transferred from one owner to another owner or where the medical record is getting updated for a particular patient so i am giving you these two examples because you know these are easy to understand you can think of any other example basically you know where the some kind of a e-commerce trade is happening any kind of a transaction that you expect this network to perform you will need to define it under transaction head so these three are different structures that you will need to create in your model file before you define your blockchain network and then the fourth thing is events so when you want to inform about these transactions taking place to the third parties or to your gui application then you write events and in the event handler you mention that what information you want to send it across the events is similar to you know what we did in ethereum and then you have transaction handler functions now these transaction handler functions are basically your chain code or your smart contract and uh, they are written in node.js they are primarily written in node.js but you know the good thing about hyperledger is it gives you sdks in almost all programming languages people prefer to write it in node.js because it is simple to do so in node.js but you can also write it in java you can even write it in c++ you can write it in python all those sdks are available you can just need to plug and play and integrate that sdk and start using your language that you want to implement in your smart contract so this is basically you know some basic theoretical concepts of hyperledger fabric now the 
key problem is that you know in a traditional network they are sharing information with each other in a inefficient expensive and a vulnerable way maybe by emails maybe by unsecured transactions and then there is a problem of reconciliation etc which is solved by using the blockchain based network where you have the consensus provenance immutability and finality blockchain i think uh, we already know that we are able to get the highly efficient distributed business network we can do the codifications of contract compliance and certifications will really define how the trust is embodied efficient and accessible marketplace built on blockchains will accelerate the exchange of information and value now these four things are key characteristics of blockchain for business one is your shared ledger shared ledger is nothing but your distributed ledger which is same as any other blockchain ledger where you know you are storing all the transactions another is your smart contract which we call it as chain code the third is your privacy so privacy basically means that your transactions are secured your data is only visible to the person who is authorized to view that information so although you can keep a database of all the information but you know it should only be visible to the person who is authorized to see and use it so the concept and notion of privacy is really really important and because of this privacy concept only we have this concept of multiple channels and uh, private data collections etc in a hyperledger fabric and then you have this notion of consensus where all parties needs to agree so there are different kind of consensus algorithms that are being used in the hyperledger fabric now what is hyperledger hyperledger is the product coming from linux foundation linux foundation is one of the biggest body in the world which promotes open source products and hyperledger is one of their projects for creating a permissioned or a private blockchain so hosted by linux foundation the experts at accelerating open technology development and commercial adoption it is neutral and collaborative so anyone can become the member of the hyperledger consortium and start to contribute to the network it gives you this industry standard blockchains by business for business hyperledger blockchain technologies emphasize on supporting different levels of access sub universal validation cross chain transaction and modularity the unique advantage of hyperledger fabric is you know these are some of the advantages one you have the permission to membership you have rich queries over immutable distributed ledger so you can write a query file i think i missed it here apart from assets transaction assets participant transaction events you can also define query query is a special file where you can define the sql like queries of what information are you expecting from this blockchain at any point of time so those are your queries and those are rich in nature because you can define a simple sql like queries for the reporting purposes then you have the modular architecture supporting plug in components so each and everything in hyperledger can be plugged out and plugged in based on your requirement protection of digital keys and sensitive data okay so you have separate modules for protecting your keys like you know your certification authority is a module that is specifically kept for securing your keys you can have your own certification authority if you don't want to use the fabric ca for authentication data on need to know basis performance scalability and level of trust and permission membership these are some of the key attributes of hyperledger fabric now what are the problems with the existing blockchains especially the blockchains that we have seen till now they have a limited throughput so you know they are giving the blocks after a certain interval while you know in a business network you generally ex expect real time output slow transaction confirmation same thing anonymous processors so anyone can join and can try to manipulate the network no settlement finality which is kind of incorrect because the public networks are also finalizing the transaction and putting it there but the transaction finality takes a lot of time and a lot of iterations which is not the case in hyperledger fabric then designed for cryptocurrency so conventional blockchains are designed for cryptocurrency while in a permissioned business network you need not have the requirement for having a token or a cryptocurrency obviously when you have the open standards which are used by anyone then you have poor governance so the standards are not modified as per the, the new needs in the timely manner while you know if you see hyperledger every two months three months you will see new releases coming in with a very new set of features and there is no privacy because it is public in nature 
So these are the goals. So you can create a enterprise grade open source distributed ledger framework and code base to support business transactions, provide neutral, open and community driven infrastructure supported by technical and business governance, build technical communities to support develop blockchain and shared ledger POCs. So you know the communities for all these blockchain networks are very strong. So you can subscribe to any of these tools, any of these blockchain networks community and you will get the regular updates of the features that are getting incorporated. And in case you are facing off any issues, you know, you just need to go to participate and join a working group. So this is what you need to do in order to join these communities. You can follow them on various social networking platforms and you know, just subscribe to various updates that are coming. Educate the public about the market opportunity. So one of the key goals of Linux Foundation and Hyperledger is also not only creating the different blockchain applications, but also sensitizing the world that you know what is the importance of blockchain and how the future applications is going to look like. So you will find various channels in the YouTube which are basically promoting blockchain technologies for different sectors that are created by Linux Foundation or Hyperledger Foundation. So you should go through all those videos to basically understand that you know what are the different possibilities of applications using the Hyperledger framework. Promotion participation of leading members of the ecosystem including developers, service and solution providers. So if your organization is a member, so there are different categories of member like you know you can be a gold member, platinum member. Accordingly, you will have a say in creating the new standards. If you are a standalone developer, then you will have a very limited say, although you can participate in the various development activities of new standards. These are the three categories and you know it has changed a lot since the creation of this slide. So your infrastructure can be on your cloud foundry, which is a cloud platform. It can be on Node.js. It can be an open container. So one more thing which you I think need to know is that you can create multiple peers, multiple nodes, multiple services in a Docker container environment. You need not have the different node running like for example in Ethereum. If you want to have the real Ethereum network, you will need to create the nodes that exist on different machines, maybe on different VMs, but they have to be on different machines which are reachable from each other. In Hyperledger Fabric, even if you have 100 nodes, you can have them on a single machine by using the Docker container model. So Docker container allows you to basically create the instances of your nodes as a service on your single machine. The infrastructure can run on Docker container model where you have different containers for your different peers as well as your ordering service, etc, etc. Then you have different frameworks like your Hyperledger Indy. Indy is basically mostly used in identity related blockchain implementations. So taking your identity or digital identity on a blockchain is one of the biggest use case of blockchain and Hyperledger Indy is specifically created or specifically designed to create the identity based blockchain network. So if you want to create any kind of a KYC system, you will probably choose Hyperledger Indy as a platform rather than using any other Hyperledger platform because it is customized to create such applications. So I was mentioning about Hyperledger Indy. So Hyperledger Indy is specifically meant for identity related issues. If you want to create a, a KYC based system, if you want to create a Aadhaar based system, probably you will create those implementation in Hyperledger Indy. Hyperledger Iroha is if you want to create a mobile based application and that too in C++. If you want to create a mobile based application, then Hyperledger Iroha is the best suited platform for that. Again, this is not very widely used because this is still in development phase. It's not very, very stable, but you know, any kind of a mobile development is preferred on Iroha. The primary contributor in Hyperledger Sawtooth is Intel. Intel uses a proof of elapsed time consensus algorithm in Hyperledger Sawtooth, which is only possible in case of Intel platforms. So whenever you are having a Hyperledger Sawtooth based implementation, you will generally find the hardware as Intel platform. So Sawtooth and Hyperledger Fabric are the key competitors in the market. While Hyperledger Fabric is number one in terms of business application, Hyperledger Sawtooth is number two. Hyperledger Fabric is promoted by IBM and Hyperledger Sawtooth is promoted by Intel.
but they are all open source so anyone can use anything so even intel can use hyperledger fabric and even ibm can use hyperledger sawtooth so that's not a problem but the primary contributions are from these companies and then Hyperledger Burrow, again, this is something which is rest of your Hyperledger implementations are just uh, kind of for a study purpose or maybe for testing purpose or, you know, for research purpose. The most common ones which are used are Hyperledger Fabric, Hyperledger Sawtooth, Hyperledger Indy, and in some cases, Hyperledger Aroha. And then there are different tools that are available, like Hyperledger Composer. Now, Hyperledger Composer is one of the most widely used tool in Hyperledger. But now this tool has been deprecated by the Hyperledger organization because the maintenance cost of this tool was really, really high. So therefore, no newer versions and no newer support of this tool is available. And you will not even find this tool listed in the Hyperledger website now. So in the projects, you will not find Hyperledger Composer while you know this was one of the most famous used for creating the hyperledger smart contract so we will still use it because it's part of your curriculum but it is no more supported by hyperledger community hyperledger explorer is just like your bitcoin explorer or ethereum explorer where you can see different blocks getting created different transactions getting committed so hyperledger explorer is that similar to bitcoin explorer and then you have hyperledger cello Hyperledger Cello is basically a tool where you can create your infrastructure components, your peers, your ordering services in a plug and play kind of environment rather than creating them from a command line or creating them through the configuration file manually. So it's kind of a blockchain as a service kind of a platform. Although it's not completely blockchain as a service, it's a very simplified form of blockchain as a service. If you want to see blockchain as a service platform that you know, then you should also be seeing some of the complex implementations which are available like uh, IBM blockchain platform. So that is currently number one blockchain as a service platform. This is blockchain as a service platform. So although Hyperledger Fabric is free, but if you want to use it as a service and if you want to quickly create your network without getting into the hassles of modifying the configuration files, setting up the various things and, you know, coming up um, with the problems and, you know, things like that, then, you know, this is the way to go. Although this is a paid service, but you can easily create your network in the matter of few clicks. So this is kind of a wizard which is available and you can just say next, 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 create your network, deploy your smart contract and you are ready to. So this is one platform. There are other platforms also which are available where you can use blockchain as a service. So this is the scope. Now this is the high level architecture of your Hyperledger fabric. So you have a membership service. Within the membership service, you have the registration registration means you can register the users you can have the identity management what all level of access will those users have and then you have auditability where you can at any point of time find the complete trace of any individual doing any activities in the network so what all transactions i have initiated what all transactions i have endorsed etc etc at any point of time you can audit because you are storing each and every transaction on a blockchain network so auditability is the default feature that comes with membership service. So your membership is one layer. Then, you know, your chain code is another layer. So chain code basically means your smart contract. Smart contracts are basically deployed on your secure container using the secure registry. So smart contracts are also secured by the digital keys before they are deployed. And they are deployed under the Docker container model so that they are more secure and easy to deploy. And then you have a blockchain layer where, you know, you have a consensus manager, you know, all this, you can see that, you know, they are modular in nature. Modular in nature means you can take out any component and bring in a new component very, very easily. So you have a consensus manager, which basically tells you what kind of consensus algorithm you are going to use. By default, it is PBFT. You can put any other consensus model. If you want to have proof of work, you can put it there as well. Then, you know, there is a service for distributed ledger, how the various nodes will store the information. So there is a service for that. There is a service for point to point protocol, how the information will be exchanged from one peer to another peer. So that is also defined. 
and then there is a service for ledger storage how the storage will look like that will be storing your database so all these are running as services that can be plugged and played so you can remove any of these service and put whatever service you want to put so membership service it provides you registration it provides you identity management where you can see the assurance and authorized disclosure of association of identities so if i am authorized to do a particular role in the network then you know somebody else will not be able to do it on my behalf because only i can do it and then there is a auditability because you know you have the complete trail of information so you can always find the information okay now for point to point protocol it uses something like http kind of a service where you know the messages are transferred from one node to another using http protocol the data structures are optimized to provide efficient schemes for maintaining the world state replicated at many participants so as i mentioned it is basically stored as level db or couch db and different consensus algorithm may be plugged in and configured for deployment based on what you want the network to look like chain code this is basically your smart contract piece of code that lets you interact with the network shared ledger whenever a transaction is invoked on the network the function in the piece of chain code is called that reads and writes the value to the ledger this is generally present only at the endorser nodes and not at all the nodes the chain code services uses docker to host the chain code so as i mentioned by default you have byzantine fault tolerance initial releases but you can always plug and play now this is something that you know we covered as a overall flow although it is not given in a comprehensive manner here you know we will go through this complete flow in a documentation that is available in my notes there are some very good articles present in the medium medium is a blogging site which keeps articles for various different technologies so especially for fabric you know i find very good articles here so if you really want to see that you know how the fabric architecture looks like you know you should actually refer to the diagrams which are there here you know this is how your typical architecture looks like you have a chain code installed at endorser nodes and then you can have different channels and you have the ledgers based on the complexity of your design you can have various kind of architectures this is the most complex one that you can imagine you have this ordering services running here you have these endorser peers and committer peers here you have two different channels channel a channel b you have couch db you have level db everything is there in order to understand the design completely or the architecture thoroughly but now what it says is that you know the client deliver the transactions to the pending pools so basically it reaches to the endorsing peers which is not given here but you know it goes to the endorsing peers now transactions are sent for application selectively apply the transaction and so its smart contract is basically applied and a return of proof of correctness or a change set is given back to the application so the endorser nodes will run the smart contract or the chain code and they will return back with the proof of correctness whether the transaction is correct or not and what all data needs to be written it will give it back to the client and the client will again you know broadcast the ordered list of transaction through the ordering services so it will give it to the ordering service and ordering service will order the list of transactions along with the proof of correctness and the change set to the other peers these other peers are known as committer peers and these peers you know where you are running this smart contract are known as endorser peers and this is how you notify and then you notify the events to various clients or applications that are there so the generalized hyperledger consensus process flow so ordering means basically you know collecting the transactions and creating the block and doing various kind of like merkle tree creation hashing etc and transmitting those blocks to the committer nodes and then validating is when you are validating the information that are coming in the nodes in form of the transaction so by logically separating these activities we ensure that any hyperledger framework can work with any hyperledger consensus module so again you know this is for the sake of plug and play if you want to change the ordering service you can easily just remove one ordering service and introduce a new ordering service so the way you have web3 apis in uh, ethereum for connecting with your front end applications similarly you have the rest api interface in uh, hyperledger fabric for connecting with the external applications or connecting with the user interface 
So REST API is basically similar to your Web3 interface where you know you get a set of APIs that you need to implement and then you can call the functions of your smart contract directly through those APIs. So SDK is available in Go language, JavaScript and Java. So it is not only in Go, Java, JavaScript, you can also have a SDK available in C++, Node.js, various other languages. Additional programming languages can be added as necessary. Again, this is something that you know we have already gone through identity, addresses, transaction, chain code, blockchain, network, storage, event. And there are APIs available for interacting with all these entities in blockchain. You know, if you want to break down an application into different logic, so you know you can see that you know you have four logical models which are available. One is your view logic where you connect your backend with your uh, front end. And so that is done through the help of REST APIs in uh, Hyperledger Fabric. And then there is a control logic which coordinates between UI, data modeler, Hyperledger APIs. So it is created in a modular way uh, because so that you can easily write your portion. So for example, if you are a blockchain logic developer, then you will essentially focus on writing your smart contracts if you are a data modeler, then you will focus on basically writing what kind of databases we have in this blockchain network and what level of accesses are needs to be given on those databases. The newer model of uh, blockchain also supports a completely relational database to be incorporated along with your normal blockchain database. So data modeling is getting really, really important in blockchain based scenario also. And then uh, the control logic and view logic are basically incorporated by your UI developers. So that's how your application looks like. It can be hosted on any kind of a uh, hardware or network. So you can have it hosted on a cloud. You can have hosted on cloud hosted multiple networks. As long as you know those nodes are connected with each other through some mechanism, as long as you can ping one node from another node, they can be part of different cloud based network as well. So multi cloud network based on blockchain is again one of the most upcoming use cases in the market where most of the companies are now going on hybrid cloud models. They do not rely on one vendor or one cloud for supporting their infrastructure applications and software. So how do they interact between multiple cloud vendors? chain is one technology that everyone wants to use so multiple networks hosted on cloud you know they generally connected through blockchain and the participant hosted intranet or a singular network or a or your default infrastructure that is available in your organization can also be used to deploy the network so it can be on cloud it can be on any kind of a hardware it can be on multi cloud as well so iroha as i mentioned is most suitable for mobile and web based development so if you are creating a blockchain based application on your mobile then probably you should use iroha because it gives you the direct implementation and design formats that can be easily used to create the mobile applications however if you see practically at least i have not seen any practical implementation coming out from iroha as yet in fact, for that matter, I have not seen a realistic application which is available on Google Play or your iOS platform, which is blockchain based. So most of the applications that are currently running are either web based application or running within a particular organization. They are not on a mobile as yet, but Hiroha gives you the functionality of easily creating such application. With respect to the features, if you compare it with the Fabric and Sawtooth, in that case it is stands nowhere and also because it uses c++ as a language which is a bit older language it does not have those kind of a functionalities available which you generally see in javascript or node.js so why iroha if you want a simple blockchain based implementation to run from your mobile device then only you will be using iroha otherwise you know you will not be using iroha so currently hyperledger project lacks an infrastructure project written in c++ thus limiting the potential developers who can contribute the so c++ is no more used widely 
Ruha aims to rectify both these points, bringing more developers while providing libraries. And this is not currently a strong focus on user interaction on mobile, though both are necessary for realization of widespread use of DLT. So if you are a good C++ developer, and if you want to write something on your mobile application based on blockchain, then use Eroha. Otherwise, it is not a suitable candidate. Fabric is the most often used one. So Fabric is a permissioned blockchain network implemented in Go programming language. Although the Fabric network is implemented in Go programming language, but you know the smart contract can be written in any language where the SDK is available. So made for enabling consortium blockchains with different degrees of permissions. So we have public, we have private, and we have consortium. So private and consortium networks are primarily created using Hyperledger. Modular architecture delivering high degree of confidence, resiliency, flexibility, and scalability. Support pluggable implementations and accommodate the complexity that exists across economic ecosystem delivers uniquely elastic, extensible architecture distinguishing it from alternate blockchain solutions. How Fabric works? So Fabric issues transactions with derived certificates that are unlinkable to owning participant. All parties must register to proof of identity to the membership service in order to gain access. The content of each transaction is encrypted to ensure only the intended participant can see the content. So each and every content is digitally encrypted using the public private key as we have in Bitcoin and Ethereum. All transactions are secured, private and confidential. Fabric can only be updated by consensus of the peers. The transactions are executed without a cryptocurrency. The events are structured as transactions and shared along with the different participants. It relies on the smart contract system where each peer of the network run in Docker container. Sawtooth Lake, as I mentioned, is primarily promoted by Intel. It is designed to explore scalability, security, and privacy questions prompted by the original distributed ledgers. So the key distinguished feature of Sawtooth from Fabric is the consensus algorithm, which is proof of elapsed time. So there is a random chance that every miner gets for mining the block, and it is based on the random number that is created by the Intel hardware. So it maintains the security of platform by allowing businessmen to create private blockchains. It is additionally exceedingly modular. This empowers enterprise and consortia to settle an agreement choices that are best prepared to make. Now, apart from this change, it also has a concept of transaction family. So while you can have hundreds of different transactions, in Sawtooth Lake, you can categorize the transaction or a group of transactions under one transaction family, and it stores those transactions in such a way that you can easily fetch up information of one transaction family without basically running multiple queries. That is another advantage the Sawtooth Lake has that you know it accumulates all the related transactions into a common group and it keeps track of how they are stored in the ledger so that they are easy to retrieve. Sawtooth Lake again, you know, I will recommend that you know if you should choose one among these, like you know, either Hyperledger Fabric or Hyperledger Sawtooth Lake, and uh, you should try to gain a complete mastery in either of these two platforms. Hyperledger ND, as I mentioned, it is basically for identity based solutions. Identity is one of the critical use case for blockchain implementation and ND is designed to basically store different kinds of identity, be it your, you know, your basically educational credentials, your identity related credentials like your birth certificate, your passport, etc. All these things are easily incorporated in Hyperledger ND. In fact, there is a product by IBM on digital identity which use Hyperledger ND. This is the product that you know IBM has developed and this is developed using Hyperledger ND. Decentralized approach of identity management and I think it must be mentioned somewhere that you know this is developed using ND. KYC, you can see that you know how the KYC is happening here. I'm not sure where it is mentioned but it is developed using Hyperledger ND. So you can even try this solution if you run that, you know, how it actually looks like. I'll just ping it across the chat. So ND is all about giving identity owners independent control of their personal data and relationship built so that the power of identity is structurally part of the transactions made about that identity. Pairwise identities not only prevent correlation, but stop third parties from transacting without the identity owner taking part. 
Hindi shares three important virtues with the internet. No one owns it. Everyone can use it. Anyone can improve it. Validation is performed by the set of validator nodes running a modified redundant Byzantine fault tolerant problem called plenum. So this is the consensus algorithm which is used in Hyperledger ND. It is called as plenum. It is a variant of Byzantine fault tolerant protocol. And plenum allowed for the group of servers run by the validators to come to a collective agreement about the validity and order of events. So each and every implementation you will find some unique consensus algorithm and that's the key distinguishing factor of any blockchain it will have a different way of achieving the consensus. Now Hyperledger Borough, this is more of a kind of test network and this is so if you want to run your Ethereum contracts on Hyperledger, then you know this is a platform which is available. So you can directly use your Ethereum smart code, a smart contract and you can run it on a Hyperledger framework using the Hyperledger Borough. But this is not very uh, promising and this is not very often used. So Cello, as I mentioned, is basically blockchain as a service platform. It can allow you to easily create your peers, your orderers, your committers, your MSPs, your certification authorities. You can define that, you know, which piece of hardware will act as what, what all software or what all chain codes needs to be installed where. And basically it will give you the data with regards to your health and analytics feature by default, which are built in that, you know, how this peer is behaving, how many transactions are endorsed, all those things you can see on a Hyperledger Cello console. If you want to use these tools, you know, there is no basically executable that is available. So what you will need to do is you will need to download the source code of this tool and then you will need to compile, execute and then use it. You will not get a binary to basically use these tools. Go to hyperledger.org and you go to Hyperledger Cello and same is for Hyperledger Explorer also. So if you go to Hyperledger Cello, you will see that, you know, you cannot download anything. You can get the code in the GitHub and from the code, you will find the instructions to basically compile and run this tool. Then Hyperledger Explorer is same as Bitcoin Explorer. Again, in order to use this, you will again need to compile this and run this. You cannot get the executable or a binary source directly installable. This is Hyperledger Explorer. So you will need to get the code. This will direct you to the Git. Then you will need to compile and run it. I think with that, we have covered a lot of ground today. So that's it for today. Thank you so much.